Hey guys, Darkovica here, and welcome back to my confusing situation of a channel. I'm sorry if I look a little crap today because uh, Southern California decided that it was finally time to be summer. And it is therefore boiling hot. It is so hot I could cry. In fact, my entire body has been crying and therefore I look beautiful and disgusting. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing well. Please tell me how you guys have been doing. I know my channel's been on the rocks recently, but I'm hoping to bring things back to normal now that I have moved into our new living quarters. You might be wondering what today's video is about, or if I have cleverly crafted a title that explains it, you aren't wondering and you're just wondering when I'll get to the point. Uh, no, today I wanted to talk about Harvest Moon, and boy do I have some feelings on Harvest Moon. I've probably talked about this before in live streams, but I decided to do a video where I'm just yapping at a camera about my feelings on Harvest Moon. Now, the reason I brought this up is because tomorrow, or today, depending on when I upload this, a new Harvest Moon game is about to be announced called Mad Dash. Now, this of course was recorded before Mad Dash was explained, so this video may not be accurate in the slightest. But I gotta admit, I'm, I'm very wary about the title Mad Dash, and also the way that the game was explained, which is, uh, it is a, a spin-off of Harvest Moon, which is never good. <laughs> And it is a, uh, a brand new way to enjoy the mechanics of Harvest Moon. I have some feelings about that statement because in my opinion, and I have bought every single Harvest Moon game that has ever been released since More Friends of Mineral Town. I don't think I actually own the first ones except that I got them offline ones, but that doesn't count. Um, no, I, I actually, Harvest Moon is one of my most favorite game series. Darkovica, why haven't you recorded yourself playing Harvest Moon? I'm not sure, but it is in fact one of my most favorite game series that has ever been created, despite the fact that I have some very strong feelings about it. Uh, my favorite Harvest Moon games are More Friends of Mineral Town, which is the very first Harvest Moon game that I ever played, and uh, after that, I think I, this is going to be slightly out of order. I actually really did enjoy D the DS ones. There's Harvest Moon DS and Harvest Moon DS Cute. I obviously lean towards Cute. It's in the title, and I love cute things. What can I say? Uh, and I also loved Another Wonderful Life, which is a really good one. I'm just going to breeze through these. I'm not going to really explain them right now because God only knows how long this video is going to be already. Uh, no, I that, th that one is an actual epitome of greatness in gaming for me. Another Wonderful Life. It, I consider that to be the greatest Harvest Moon game, despite the fact that it is slightly lacking. And I will explain why. Harvest Moon, I feel, has really drifted away from what the games actually are. And I think Harvest Moon is kind of confused about what it is, or I guess I should say Natsume, which is the company that, you know, releases them. Uh, now, before people start posting in the comments, Starkovica, please play Story of Seasons. I have! And Story of Seasons is a lot closer to the original Harvest Moon games. A lot closer. It's not perfect. The first story of Seasons killed me with its seven day tutorial that is non-skippable that takes like three hours to complete. I don't think it's that long. It's probably like an hour, but that's still a really long tutorial. So I'm not terribly happy with Story of Seasons, but that aside, Story of Seasons is a lot closer. My other favorite uh, kind of branch of Harvest Moon is Rune Factory. Rune Factory is pure perfection, except for the PS4 one. I don't remember what it was called. That one was weird, but the other ones, pure perfection. Three and four, mwah. You don't need to play them in order. Just three and four, mwah, for the DS, mwah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that blew out the speakers, but seriously, Rune Factory. No, Harvest Moon, back in the day of like More Friends of Mineral Town, Another Wonderful Life, which was on the GameCube, More Friends of Mineral Town was on the Game Boy Advance, those ones, were pure goodness and the reason I think that is is because Harvest Moon can be can be defined as a farming life simulator. It is not a farming simulator, it is a farming life simulator. Sometimes you get away with like the little fairies and the gods and all of that like mythical stuff but it I feel like once they started focusing on the weird fantasy aspects that are not quite a hundred percent fantasy it really got weird. It didn't stay a life simulator because that's another really important part of Harvest Moon. Now, a lot of you know that I will die on the hill that is gameplay over story in a video game. I will die on that hill that gameplay is more important than story. Harvest Moon is a half exception because 
in Harvest Moon, story is a mechanic in that you can play the game a million times. And if it is done right, the story will never be the same. In More Friends of Mineral Town, and I have played that game so many times, it is embarrassing. Um, in More Friends of Mineral Town, every single time, I have had a different character. And she looks the same. There's no character creation. There's no... She's blonde. Her canon name is Claire. None of that changes. You always get a dog. It's just... That's it. That's more friends of Mineral Town. People don't change. The core gameplay doesn't change. What does change is the way that you play. And I can't explain it, but I have never played more friends of Mineral Town the same way twice. Even if I have gone after the same romanceable character in the game, because obviously Harvest Moon has dating, you know, mechanics. Even if I have gone after the same person, that game I have never played the same way. And the best way for me to explain this is uh, in, in More Friends of Mineral Town, there is a winery. And this is going to be a long video, but it's going to be full of Harvest Moon goodness. Uh, there is a winery, and it is run by Duke and Anna. Duke and Anna are a very interesting pair of characters that are very flawed and very interesting. They have their orchard of grapes, and they, they named, I think they named it after their daughter. The problem is, is that the game loosely hints at the fact that their daughter ran away from Mineral Town with the daughter of another character, and that daughter uh, actually abandoned her daughter and left her with her father. So, you know, obviously already we've got some dark overtones to, you know, more Friends of Mineral Town, which has had some kind of remakes. There was one for the PSP that was kind of more Friends of Mineral Town, but more so the original game, which was just Harvest Moon 64, of which all of these are bit based off of up to a certain point. Um, they're all just kind of remakes, kind of. Um, now in that, in my in this run through that I'm thinking of, I for some weird reason would always stop by the winery and say hello to Duke and Anna. Never gave them presents, just for whatever reason, whenever I went into town every single day, the first stop was always the winery. Just a weird habit that picked up in that particular save file. And obviously, affection grows very slowly if you talk to people in Harvest Moon but boy did it grow. And they actually became my closest friends in that game, in that save file. They were the people that I knew the most. I wasn't even uh, going after the character that's kind of related to them. There's a character, if you get him a job, he'll stay in Mineral Town. If you don't get him the job at the winery, then he leaves. Uh, but it's like, you see, there's a lot of little things in More Friends of Mineral Town that is world building, story building, and it's there's so many things that you might never ever see. Another amazing aspect of More Friends of Mineral Town is you can actually get your rival and some of the other love interests to get married. If you if you are steadfast enough to go through every single one of their heart events and their rival events, they will get married. This is only doable if you yourself are not married. So it is, this is a bit of a time limit depending on the game that you're playing. Some of these games have a time limit of three in-game years and then it ends. Um, and you have to get married by that point. It's a core mechanic of Harvest Moon. The long story short of this is that these games obviously had a lot of little things that built to make a completely unique experience no matter how many times you played it, unless you tried to 100% the entire game. Then I don't, you know, after that it's just kind of like, you know, how every book is just a remix of the dictionary. It's kind of that. But it that's what Harvest Moon is. It is a life simulator, or at least it was. Uh, another Wonderful Life is a Perfect example of this. Almost all Harvest Moon games, except Another Wonderful Life, end after you have a baby. You can play infinitely. It's a bit like Stardew Valley. It's You can play infinitely, but that's it. They become a toddler, and then they never go any further than that. Another Wonderful Life is very, very different, and I, I risk spoiling the entire game by saying this, but you die in that game of old age, okay? It is a life simulator. It has life. It is a weird one because months are 10 days long, which is interesting. But it was on the GameCube. I know cheats for that game. <laughs> on the GameCube only, nothing else. Uh, but seriously, it was it was one of the most amazing experiences for me. I've never beat it because it's a long game despite days being there only being 10 days in each month. But it is an amazing game. It's a an ex it's an experience worth living for because seriously, it again, it even though there are like 10 characters in that particular game, no experience is the same. It just depends on who you wind up talking to every single day or how you play. And to me, that's what makes a Harvest Moon game. 
They have not evolved to be life sims. They have evolved to be farming simulator with slight dating aspect. The farming aspect of gameplay has changed dramatically from Harvest Moon 64. In the old days, it was just plain farming, plain dating. Build your own canon story in your head. These days, you have Harvest Moon Minecraft. I don't remember the exact name of it, but it was legit a, their take on the Minecraft cave or er, crave, where uh, the terrain was squares and you could uh, mine the terrain. The terrain was the only thing that was square. Everything else was totally normal. The other problem that I have with Harvest Moon is that they have completely forced a storyline into every single game. In the original Harvest Moon games, there was no storyline. You farmed, you dated people, you got married, you had a kid. Rinse, repeat, that's it. Play forever, infinite, your toddler never grows up. That's it, that's Harvest Moon. Original Harvest Moon. Even Another Wonderful Life didn't have a story. Starting Magical Melody, which this may m anger a lot of people. I don't like Magical Melody. For some reason, a lot of people like Magical Melody. I don't like Magical Melody. I hate it. I hate the graphics. I hate the gameplay. I hate the way it feels. I hate the way it looks. I hate the way it sounds. It's like, to me, that was the beginning of the end. Magical Melody. If you look at it, everybody looks like kids. I mean, the, the art for Harvest Moon has always been kind of like chibi. Magical Melody onward, it, it they just look like babies. They just look like toddlers. If you look at today's Harvest Moon games, it feels weird to date characters when they look nine. It's weird. It takes you out of the game. There's only so far you can do chibi. Um, and I mean, the original art, I mean, again, it was kind of chibi, but it wasn't, it, there was still an, an essence to it that made it feel relatable. I don't know. Maybe it was just that there's no story. Um, I mean, in some of them, the story is so forced that there is just no room for you to build your own story. A lot of the gameplay gets tied into the story, so you cannot progress your farm unless you do this arbitrary storyline that never changes. Because you can't do it out of order, you can't do it when you feel like, you need to do it immediately or you literally just cannot play the game. And in some cases, certain quests can only be done in certain seasons, which means you need to wait a whole year of playing in very terrible conditions where like the soil isn't good because you need to appease the earth god by planting 42 strawberries and and eight good quality turnips i don't know it's really arbitrary stuff and you can't get married in almost all of them until you beat the storyline ds cute had this and you had to get 50 sprites in order to get married and i hated it it was the only thing i didn't like about ds cute was it had that stupid arbitrary sprite requirement to rescue 50 sprites and it was hard okay this was not easy this was like tens if not hundreds of hours of gameplay for some of that i digress my my point is Harvest Moon has a story mechanic in that the life aspect of it was its story. And that was the story that you build, not the story that it tells you exists. And Story of Seasons has this too, where it kind of forces a story on you. Which is why I'm not like 100% sold on Story of Seasons. I get it, a lot of people need a story in an RPG in order to feel like it's good. Harvest Moon to me is not really an RPG, it is a farming life sim. Which means if we just focused on the characters more and creating in-depth characters and an in-depth world that you stumble upon the way that you do in More Friends of Mineral Town, you could play More Friends of Mineral Town and never find out that Duke and Anna have a daughter. Like, legit. I mean, maybe. They kind of talk about her a lot. Like, a lot. But, I mean, you could never... You could play the whole game and never make the connection that potentially their daughter ran off with Barley... I think his, the old man's name is Barley, the guy who gives you a horse. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, you've played the game. No, uh, I honestly, it's it's like a really, really minor reference, and it's not clear, so that could be incorrect. Who knows? But the idea is, you could play the whole game and never come across everything in the world that the world has to offer. It's, I mean, okay, a good example of this is Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley, My Time in Portia, which I've just started playing recently, they do not shove a story down your throat. Stardew Valley, I can start over 500 times. And again, even if I woo Sebastian every single time, which I do, 
uh, it will never be the same game. It will never be the same experience. It just depends on how quickly I do certain things, what the weather is on certain days, what's my luck with the spirits, in case you haven't noticed, a cat has walked onto my lap. Um, it just, it changes dramatically. And that's what made Stardew Valley and My Time in Portia just such great games, because they don't give you a story. You make the story. And that is a... Child, you're doing this on purpose. That is a farming life simulator. <laughs> Just looking at me like, why are you doing that? Uh, that is a farming life simulator. It is a mixture of farming mechanics and life. Creating a life. Building a story. Let's bring back children who age. Another wonderful life. Come on, I need another one. I need another one that makes your children grow up with you and help out on the farm. Seriously, I will pay through the nose for this. I'm serious. Um, another one that I played recently, it's still in beta. Kind Seed, I think it's called. That one looks pretty legit. That one looks pretty good. Um, it's just this idea of forcing stories onto you, and it's they're not required. They're unnet they're completely unnecessary. I don't need them. <laughs> don't need your dang old story. Give me the most basic introduction, like your grandfather has left you this farm. Please take care of it. And I can build stories in my head. It's part of being, or maybe it's part of being an imaginative person who likes to write. But seriously, like, you can write a billion different stories about your character in Stardew Valley. Fan fictions, whatever you want to call it. And none of them could be the same. Every, every single, you could read thousands of them. If you go into the Harvest Moon, More Friends, and Mineral Town section of fan fiction, you are in for a ride. <laughs> seriously. It's like The Sims. The reason I like The Sims is because, again, it doesn't force a story on you. Even with Strangerville, which is more story-oriented than the rest of the expansion packs, they don't force that story on you. It is a, a life simulator. You make your own story. And I think, to bring this around, Harvest Moon and Natsume, and even Story of Seasons, they've really forgotten that part of Harvest Moon. That was what made these games so special was the fact that it was a combination of farming and life. I don't want Farming Simulator. There's a game literally called Farming Simulator. I could just go play Farmville, okay? I don't want Farmville. I don't want your KPI mobile BS. I don't want your your fancy ad revenue. How can I make the most amount of money with the most amount of clicks possible without scaring away my customers type of video game? I just want to make my own stories and I will play your game literally 5,000 times. I will buy all of your DLC. I will take DLC. Like, give me DLC. Give me new characters. Give me new areas. Expand upon your world. But like, I mean, okay, let's go back to Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is amazing because it has all of these different areas and you are building an explanation for them yourself. There is no explanation. Why does the mine have monsters in it? Why is there a fighter's guild in town? What is Stardew Valley and why do you live in Pelican Town? What else is in Stardew Valley? Why is there an Egyptian mine? It's like, I don't know, come up with it on your own. And that's kind of what makes those games so much fun, is that creativity. It is the lack of story that is the good story in this. It is the fact that the gameplay exists but there's these amazing characters, and I even feel like you could have more story, backstory for each of those characters. Like, I mean, each character has their own story, their own existence, and that's amazing. Give them that backstory, give them that personality, because Harvest Moon games right now are super lacking in character. Their characters are cardboard cutouts of archetypes in anime. It's just the same set of characters with slightly different color palettes, and it's just, take a character development class, like a world building class, come on. You got a lot of stuff you can work with. It's almost like Natsume doesn't know what their audience is. Are they aiming for children? Are they aiming for adults? Are they aiming for anything in between? Yes. That's it, it's yes to all of that, yes. <laughs> they don't know, so they don't know how to make the game. Rune Factory, Okay, I mentioned Rune Factory. Again, the PS4 one was weird. Three and four on the DS. Mwah. I'm sad because the company went under and I will literally cry for the rest of my life. Rune Factory was a blessing. Um, no, seriously, the third and the fourth ones are, am I kicking the cat? No, I'm not, okay, sorry. 
I will cry about Rune Factory forever. They did have stories, actually. They were not technically forced on you. You were rewarded for doing the story, and I believe you couldn't get married unless you did the story. But they were different. They gave you so much to do. It's They were more of an RPG. They had a lot of dungeons, a lot of enemies that you could fight. They definitely had hardcore RPG elements. That kind of a game where you have leveling up abilities, skills, weapons, magic, literally, that's Rune Factory. It's monsters, boss fights, dungeons, mystery dungeons. Did they? Maybe. I <laughs> Take that back. Dragons. Um... Dating, farming, it has all of it. it. Crafting, it has all of that. And that that's when you can start putting a story into your game. Because that at that point, it is an RPG. And it does need a role-playing story. And even then, I could still play those games 5,000 times. Because for some reason, I still have my own canon. Um, the characters are all super character characterized in those games. The world is amazing in those games. You seriously, like, not... Just enough is explained to you so you're not like, what the flip is going on? But like, enough is not explained to you that you are able to just sit there and go, mermaids, I guess, dragons, I guess, um, this girl who missed is in every single game, I guess. <laughs> Seriously, I, I suggest it. The first one on the DS is very, very hard. I just, you know, hold your britches, okay, it's hard. The second one, not quite so hard, but still hard. Third one, walk in the park. Fourth one, a little harder, but still kind of a walk in the park. Um, third one is the best if you want a casual game. Seriously though, I I think my main issue is that Harvest Moon is trying to be an RPG and they're focusing on the wrong thing, which is trying to make your story for you and taking away the life aspect and not giving you enough of an RPG to make up for it. Some of them do have fighting. Sort of sort of like big sort of okay it's not fighting it's like slimes sort of you can like use your sword maybe i don't know rune factory was better um it's just i guess that's it that's all i really have to say long story short i'm not excited for mad dash because the phrasing of it and the way it's titled makes it sound like it's going to be bejeweled or as everyone i know keeps referencing diner dash it sounds like it's going to be just not Harvest Moon. It's gonna be some weird spin-off that's using a well-known IP and I'm gonna buy it because it's Harvest Moon. Unless it literally looks like Bejeweled, then I'm not touching it with a 10-foot pole. Um, if it has life simulator mechanics, then maybe. But I mean, I just feel like they're, they're focusing way too much on the farming aspect and the forced story aspect. Don't want your forced story. Another good one that was recent was New Beginning forgot about that one. New Beginning was alright on the 3DS. It had a little bit of the whole issue where if you don't do something in the season you have to wait a whole year to progress the story and that's a whole year of being trapped, not really able to progress because you can't finish the story quest because you couldn't find beehives because you didn't know you needed them because you got stuck on some other arbitrary growing thing and beehives only appear in spring. That's what happened. Same thing happened in the Minecraft one. Anyways, Light, Light of Hope is okay. I will say that. Light of Hope is okay. It feels funny. Sometimes it feels really weird. Uh, the, my only complaint about my time at Porsche is that the writing is not the best. Hire me. I'll volunteer. Let me rewrite your shit, please. I'm sorry, your game is almost there. It, the writing is just run on sentences and some misspellings. Just like, I will do it for you. Okay, uh, anyways, I'm sorry. I get obsessed about farming life sim games. I really do. It's a weird obsession of mine. Uh, thank you so much for watching this 25 minute expose on Harvest Moon. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time. Let me know what your favorite Harvest Moon games are. Do you disagree with me about Magical Melody? I'm sure, I'm sure you do. And uh, let me know why in the comments. I would be happy to argue with you. I'm joking, I'm not joking. Lucian? <laughs> cattail. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.